Hey, Noreen, I'm really glad you uh, could join me today. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, the travel writing and uh, the idea that there's so many people out there who, who want to be travel writers. I mean, they see, they see people like you and I who are bebopping all over the world and going to these really cool places and we're writing about it. And, you know, they think that's just like an amazing lifestyle. And, and frankly, it is. <laughs> I love this lifestyle. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you about it because you, you are the, sort of the epitome of the, of the kinds of people who have these dreams. Because I come at this, as you know, from a journalist background. I was with the Wall Street Journal for years. And, and so I, you know, I have that sort of writerly journalist background that kind of gave me entree into this world a little bit because I have some of the contacts. You come at it later in life from the perspective of a nurse, um, which is like a radically different career shift. Um, and so I'm really curious about that, how you, how you went from being Noreen the nurse to Noreen the travel writer. So Jeff, thanks again for having me. I really appreciate that. And I'm really a pay it forward person. So I don't mind telling people how this all came about. It was really a crazy, kind of a crazy story. I had a, um, a colleague that I worked with when I lived in Washington, DC, and uh, she's a, she was a nurse colleague. And she gave me a call one day when I was working at the hospital here in San Diego. And she said, oh my gosh, I, you, have to, you have to do this course. You have to do this course. And so uh, long story short, she was on her way to Boston for the Ultimate Travel Writers Workshop, live workshop that they do every year. And so I kind of blew her off and thought, oh, I don't know, you know, this is really, you know, I thought, Jeff, honestly, that um, I thought magazines had their own writers. So, I mean, what, I didn't know anything about freelance writing. But anyway, uh, long story short is, again, I signed up for the course. She wouldn't, she wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't back off about it. So I signed up for the course. Um, it was happened to be here in San Diego in my own hometown. So now I really had to do it. And um, the first day I was there, I was listening to Jen Stevens speak. And I knew, I, I knew I was coming toward the end of my career. And it was getting to the point where I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in my second go around the sun. And I, I, I knew travel would have to be part of it because I traveled since I was a child. And I'm married to a retired naval officer, so we lived all over the world. And actually, we've been to Prague several times, where you are. But anyway, um, what ended up happening is I did take the course, and I left um, that conference, as I've told people, on fire. I knew that this was something that I really, really wanted to do. So it gave me the great foundation, Jeff, for what I needed to be able to move on um, and, and to make this work. So... Anyway, I started writing, and by the end of the first year, I had 47 published articles. Wow. Because I just, I, I just knew. So, so where, where, well, let me back up. Uh, how long ago was this? When did you take this class? Uh, six years ago. Six years ago. So mm -hmm. in, the, in the, that first year when you had 47 published articles, what kind of publications are we talking about? Um, mostly travel publications, but I kept myself open. Um, so before, the only writing I had ever really done was for um, nursing journals. And, but that was more, as you said before, Jeff, more of a, you know, technical side of the house. So it's, you know, that was, that was coming from a totally different side of the brain. So um, mostly I started out doing travel, travel type pieces. And then I'm, you know, eventually I moved on to writing about food, writing about wine, history, things like this, um, because, you know, we're kind of multifaceted individuals for the most part. And so when we go to destinations, we often find they're multifaceted as well. So there's a lot of ways you can go about telling a story about a destination other than just a travel story. So when you're talking about the publications you were you were originally getting in those 47, are we talking about the big publications like Condé Nast, or are we talking about a different level of publication? No, they, I, you know, those are hard to break into, um, especially for new writers. A lot of the magazines out there also have their own staff of writers, and so the um, they they don't take a large percentage of freelance uh, freelance writers, and so as a result of that. I went to publications that 
are open to working with brand new writers, you can pen a really good story. They will, um, they will take your stories. Eventually then I moved into uh, publications, uh, you know, a lot more of the print publications like Edible San Diego Magazine, where edibles are all over the United States in different areas. And then I broke into about three years ago, uh, Travel Pulse, which is owned by MSN. And so I'm a regular contributor there. So that's what it really comes down to is that, you know, you have to find the publications. And that's what's great about a course like this is that it helps build a foundation, but it also, we also highlight those publications that do take freelance writers on our panel within the group. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of what you're doing it sounds like it's online now. A lot of the travel stuff you write, it goes on the online source, on online destinations. No, I do both. I do um, both online and I do print. Okay. Okay. How often are you writing these days pre-COVID? <laughs> <laughs> um, I call it pivoting in a huge way. Uh, a lot of the publications, even like Travel Pulse, is taking less stories at this point, and they've really slowed down the amount because we can't travel. So we right, can't right. write about the places we can't travel to. So what I ended up doing is pivoting to the point where I could do more local stories. We had a new publication that, um, that just recently came onto the market here in San Diego called the San Diego Explorer. Beautiful, on, you know, beautiful um, online publication. And uh, the editor invited me to write for her because I live here in San Diego. And keeping in mind always, as I tell people, your hometown is someone else's travel destination. So I really kind of pulled back on less of the international type stories that I was writing, focusing more on my hometown, focusing on hotels, uh, restaurants, uh, and, and, and really kind of finding some really unique stories, like perhaps like movies that were filmed here in San Diego, uh, you know, places that you can write about where you're not having to hop on a plane and travel to. So it's been a lot of fun for me to be able to explore even more of my hometown. And are you, are you to the stage where you're, you're making a living at this? Is this is a full-time gig for you? Yes, okay. it's a full-time gig. It is a full-time gig. It'll never be the six figures I was making as a nurse, but then I didn't expect it to be. This is my second go around the sun. And what I tell travel writers is it's up to you. It depends on who you write for. It depends on, you know, some publications pay extremely well. Um, I also am the, um, there's so many other ways you could do. I've done, I've done um, pieces for um, attorney's offices on de different destinations that, you know, coming at it from a, um, a perspective of the environment. Again, if you can write, there are so many opportunities out there. So I get I get paid extremely well with those. Um, again, I am the pioneer for the Travel Writers Cafe for Great Escape Publishing, and I do that on a on a uh, on a full time basis as well as my writing. And what is the range that you get paid of for a story? I mean, from the from the sort of low end up to when you say you get paid pretty well by the lawyer folks. What kind of range are we talking about on a per article basis? Okay, so I would have to say probably I range, okay, stories that I write for range from anywhere from 50, sometimes 25, it depends. If you're, if it's brand new publication, you're breaking into for the first time, oftentimes the editors, because I have the experience now, will offer me more than they offer other, you know, other contributors. Um, I would say the range goes anywhere from I've made $25 a story, then I've made, um, you know, for projects that I've worked with, like for attorney groups and things like this, I've made $6,000 on those uh, for one particular project. So, and it's everywhere in between. It all depends. I typically, if I were to, to rank it, I would probably say my average is probably about $150 a okay. story. And how big a story is that? Um, those, again, can range from anywhere between, say, six to 800 words um, to, uh, I would say 12, 1300 words. I don't really do long type stories. That's really not, that's not really what I do. Um, so again, I think it's pretty decent pay given the fact that, you know, that you're not having to write, you know, you're not having to write a book. 
-hmm. And the other thing part about it too, Jeff, as you know, is that the perks that come along with this job are just incredible. They're just yeah, that incredible. Was, that was what I was going to say is that, yeah, you, you might get paid $800 to $1,300, but there are perks involved that are substantially substantially better. There are. So that, that actually leads into the question, what is what, what are the favorite perks that you've, you've experienced over the years? And what are your favorite destinations that you that you've been to? Wow, that's a hard that's a hard question um, because I've gotten to do so many really fun, crazy things. Um, hot air ballooning is amazing. I looked over the vineyards. I really enjoyed that. Um, I love kayaking. So anytime they can put me in a in a kayak somewhere, that would be fantastic. Um, swimming with whale sharks. Um, gosh. Uh, just, you know, sunset cruises, uh, you know, opportunities to, to write stories and meet people that are really um, different and have such a unique type story uh, about them. Um, favorite destinations? Well, you know, I love Mexico, everything about Mexico, and I love Hawaii. Last year, I had two destinations that I went to and they were completely surprises to me. And I was really, really excited about that. One was at the Turks and Caicos down in the Caribbean. And it was absolutely one of my favorite islands that I've ever been to. And the other one that was a huge surprise to me was the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. I just completely and totally fell in love with the Dominican Republic. And we all know that they went through some tough times and had some bad press and things like this. But I loved my visit there. And so that, that has to be one of my other uh, favorites. Um, I love the Virgin Islands, uh, the British Virgin Islands, the US Virgin Islands, and well, everything about Mexico, but I particularly love Riviera Maya because of the ruins and its history. So aside from the Caribbean and Mexico, have you been internationally elsewhere for, for travel? Oh, yeah. For, for travel yeah, I've been. Mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of places in Europe as well, mm -hmm. and we were hoping this year to add a lot of Asia uh, to the mix, which we all know what happened with that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, when's the last time you got to exercise your passport? Mine's been six months. <laughs> um, let me think. Just November, so December, January, March. April, almost a year, wow. Yeah, almost a year. Wow. I had trips. I had trips on the books, Jeff, um, you know, hosted trips to Belize, another one to the Riviera Maya, um, and then another one, um, uh, there was another Caribbean destination I can't recall right now. Um, we also had trips to Europe planned. Everything got shelved. But when you, um, say, when you say hosted trips, can you explain that a little bit so people understand what that is? Yes, I can. Um, so a hosted trip basically means that um, a PR rep, public relations representative, or let's say a tourism board reaches out to you as a writer and says, we would love to host you at our destination. Um, we will cover everything, including you know, airfare, um, your hotel or resort, uh, all food, all activities, uh, and, and everything that goes with that. Uh, so there's nothing that comes out of pocket in a case like that. They host, they host me in exchange for me writing stories about that destination. Right, right. <clears throat> Which goes to the big perk we were talking about. I mean, yeah, you get paid 800 to $1,300, whatever it is, but you've got a $3,000 trip that somebody gave you or, or more. Exactly. Um, so how do, how do the PR agencies find you? How do they know to call Maureen and say, hey, we want you in Turks and Caicos? Networking is a huge, huge part of it. Um, one of it is that they that I have a lot of tourism board reps that are friends, so I've asked them, how do you know, how do you find me? You know, that's always the question that I wanted to know. Is like there's there's a, there's so many writers out there. One is that if you write for a, a magazine that has a lot of readership, that makes a huge difference. But even before I was doing that, I have to say, Jeff, that offering them like maybe four or five stories from the destination, even if those particular uh, publications don't have the readership of 4.5 million, you know, readers, still the fact that they're getting four or five stories from that destination makes a difference coming at it perhaps from a historic perspective, the food perspective, things like this. So a lot of it is what you can offer them 
Um, I'm real big on social media. I believe that we have that. That's what we have to do. We have to market ourselves as writers. And marketing yourself means that anytime you have a story published, you want to be sharing that story on social media so that so that people can know that. Tagging those destinations that have hosted us makes a huge difference. They have a network also, and they know each other. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, I've had a lot going to travel and adventure shows. Those travel and adventure shows are all across the world uh, in different destinations. Um, and that has been a gold mine for me. You kind of walk up, you get to talk to the PR reps, you get to give them your card, you tell them a little bit about what you do, they tell you a little bit about their destination, and then you, and then, you know, then you re receive the invitation. The other one is the Trout Media Intermediate Marketplace uh, that I go to every January in New York City and pray it doesn't snow and is so cold because <laughs> I don't like cold weather. Um, but that's another really high. I, I've received a lot of um, offers from that. And the other thing, too, is by joining that organization, there are, uh, there, there are uh, PR reps that have reached out to me uh, offering you know, to host me at their destination. And do you have a, one of the challenges that I've found in, in writing travel um, is that there are certain publications I've dealt with, particularly large national newspapers in America, their travel sections, where they don't, they want to know that you've never taken a hosted trip because they want you to be entirely objective and they don't want any kind of, you know, PR sway in there. Does that, does that create any issues for you in terms of where you try to pitch your story ideas? Well, I had met the rep from um, the Los Angeles Times, actually. And she had, you know, she had wanted me, she had seen a piece that I had done um, about LA. And she said, you know, I'd love for you to contribute. And that's when she told me, it absolutely has to come out of your pocket you cannot, you cannot take any perks whatsoever on those trips. Um, and the pay wasn't great. So if I'm having to pay it out of pocket, you know, and then I'm looking at the amount of money that I'm getting for that story, sure, I would love to be in the travel section of the LA Times. But, you know, I'm at a point, Jeff, where, you know, as I said before, um, I'm retired from nursing and this is my second go around. So for me, it's all really about the travel and the opportunities to go to places that I've never been to before that it doesn't all have to come out of my pocket. So I just kind of do the cost benefit analysis and figure out whether I want to do it or whether I don't. Yeah, that, that's actually one of the newspapers I was thinking of because I've written for the LA Times Travel and I know, I know their policy and, and I have right. to assure them that you know, I've never taken pennies or dollars doing this or whatever. Um, so... Um, how, how often are you working every day writing travel stories or is it, is it, you, are you picking when you want to write? I'm picking when I want to write, but I have to say I probably touch on travel stories or research every single day as a writer in some way, in, in one shape or form, whether it's pitching a story to a new uh, magazine that I haven't written for before um, or whether it's actually writing a travel story. So I, I, you know, a lot of it, a lot of my calendar and what I do depends on deadlines uh, for the publications. Some are pretty open with me, you know, getting stories to them whenever I get to them. I've written for you guys and, and, uh, and you know, and CRN's been really good about that as well. So I have to say that um, a lot of this, a lot of it depends on where I am, what I'm doing. Um, I do not, however, write anything when I'm on a press trip. When I'm on a press trip, my philosophy is I am at that destination, and I'm going to give that destination all of my uh, all of my attention. So I might be taking notes and a lot of photos and everything, but I don't write during those times. What, what's, a, what's a query letter look like for you? Because I know people get hung up on how they want to pitch a story somewhere, and they end up sort of vomiting everything into a query letter. And I know from working at newspapers and dealing with editors, and they just want something really tight and concise and hey are you interested in x they don't want to know everything about a destination but I, I don't know if it's like that in your in your world yes absolutely you know I, your your pitch to me 
is the first the line, first line of communication with an editor. And so, so you're, they're also gauging how you write when they're reading your pitch. So I try to not make the pitch really long, but I try to tell that, I try to put enough into that pitch where they understand the angle of the story that I'm coming from, why I believe it's gonna be a great fit for that publication. Because honestly and truly, if it's not a great fit for the publication, the editor's not gonna take it. It doesn't matter how good of a writer you are. So I really target uh, my pitches, Jeff, to to that particular publication, so that you know, so that they are they are seeing that I have something to offer them in the story that I'm that I'm wanting to write. Okay. Ashi, my last question: When COVID is over and everybody can travel again, and you're, you're you're sort of longing for the smell of jet fuel one more time, what is the first place you want to go to and write about? Spain. I don't know what part. Um, probably Mallorca. Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting to go. Um, to I want to. My. I cannot wait to get on a plane and get back to Europe. I love Europe. I had the uh, opportunity to live there for three years when my husband was um, was stationed with NATO in the Navy. And I have to be honest with you, it is magical. I absolutely love it. And. So the first trip that, that I, I want to want that trip that we had to give up this year to Spain and we had some wonderful we were going to do Barcelona and Mallorca and a couple of other destinations. So I have to say that's probably it. it, it if not that, it has to be Italy. As many times as I've been there, um, for me, Italy is magical. Yeah, I've got to get uh, my first spot. I want to go to is Oman. I really want to see. Arabia. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So how many countries have you been to? Uh, let me look. My daughter actually, this is really cute because my daughter actually, if you see behind me, uh -huh. there's a thing, there's a little um, a photo picture on the wall. And that was um, the, the, the uh, our children and their spouses uh, got us that for our 40th wedding anniversary a couple of years ago. And at that time, let's see, it was 21 countries uh, since then. I think we're probably up to about 25 or 26. Okay. I am pushing up against 70 right now, so I'm trying to get to 70. <laughs> wow. Now you've been doing this a little bit longer than me. Remember, I was saving lives. Well, that, that's, that, this is, I, I also grew up with a mom who worked in the airline industry, so I've been traveling since I was about seven years old. So I've, I've had a long time to see countries. Yeah. Anyway, and those are just, right. And those are just the countries we did together as a couple. Yeah. There are more than that, you know, that I, that, I, that I did when I was a child, you know, like I did Lebanon and, you know, and the Holy Land and, you know, Israel. And so there's a lot more. I, I, that's a good question. You know, I'm going to, now you have me curious about that. I'm going to have to make a list. Well, there, there's a great app on, uh, on the iPhone. It's called Ben, B-E-E-N, B-E-E-N, like I've been there. And you can uh -huh. just, you just click on the, on the map and it counts everywhere you've been in the world and what percentage of the world you've seen and what percentage of each continent you've seen. So I, follow, I use that all the time. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Maureen, I really appreciate your time and talking to us about this. Oh, it's really been great, Jeff. And so nice to meet you in person. Well, not in person, but virtually <laughs> these days. But um, yeah, my pleasure. You too. I'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye, Jeff. Take Bye -bye. care.